Yo, what is going on guys, Horcrux here. Welcome to the channel. And if you're new, consider giving the channel a like and sub because occasionally I do put out some pretty decent content. So today's video, we are going to be talking about aim assist. And no, I do not mean to spark a war between what input method you're using in Halo Infinite. If you are good at aiming, you are good at aiming regardless of your input. But what a lot of people do not know that there are actually two types of aim assist and mouse and keyboard actually has access to one of them. So let's get into it, fellas. Welcome back you nerds and before we hop into the bread and butter of today's video a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons as well as my community members uh, without whom I could not be doing this guys. I really appreciate the support you guys provide to the channel and if you're interested in becoming a community member or supporting the channel uh, I'll link to all that is down in the description below. Okay so the two types of aim assist that we have in Halo Infinite. As well as called reticle friction and also bullet magnetism. So in the background here, I'm gonna be showing you everything on controller first, and then we're gonna hop over to mouse and keyboard and show you the counterparts. Now, reticle friction is exclusive to the controller. So I'm taking my hand completely off of my right stick and I'm just going back and forth. And you can see my reticle is actually being tracked onto the target. If I can get a better example, there we go. Now, interesting thing to note though, if you're standing still, this does not happen. So let's go here, intercept the path. Look, my controller doesn't move. Oh, my reticle doesn't move if I'm not moving my controller. And one more thing to note is that when you are going left and right, you actually have this snare effect that happens on your reticle if you are a controller. Now, it doesn't matter if you're standing still or strafing back and forth, up and down, left and right, you, you will still get this form of magnetism. So the next form of aim assist we're also testing on the controller is what's called bullet magnetism. Now, if you are reasonably close to your target, so let's put the crosshair here right above our character model. Notice that the reticle does not enclose any of the character model itself. If you pull the trigger, you're still going to get shots register on Frank over here. Now this is also true for mouse and keyboard, which we will be going over here in just a moment. So now it's the mouse and keyboard's time. So the first aim assist we'll be going over is reticle friction. So you can see Frank running back and forth here. I have my hand completely off of the mouse. Notice that the reticle does not move whatsoever as Frank runs by. When I strafe left and right with my reticle, notice it does not slow down whatsoever. So mouse and keyboard does not have reticle friction in the slightest. Mouse and keyboard yet again. We're going to zoom in on Frank over here. And this is an example of bullet magnetism. So we're going to place a crosshair just like our previous example. Right above our target, we are going to pull the trigger and notice we're still getting hits on old Frank out here despite him not being in the crosshair. So the TLDR of the video is that there's two forms of aim assist. Controller gets both forms of aim assist while mouse and keyboard only gets one and that's obviously for balancing reasons because your freedom of motion on mouse and keyboard is much greater than that of the controller. So the controller needs a, a little bit more help to try to get the consistent aim as you can attain on mouse and keyboard. So just a little tip for you guys. The aim assist is much stronger the closer you are on controller, right? So if you're trying to pick your fights, please do not pick long range fights on controller. So that's the advantage the controller does have. Your mid game fights are going to be much better comparatively to mouse and keyboard. But on the flip side, mouse and keyboard does have a lot more movement that you can get away with. You have a lot higher sensitivity, a lot of defensive and offensive mobility options. So there's your two input methods, fellas. So whichever one you choose is entirely up to you and it doesn't matter what input method you choose. If you're a good shot, you're a good shot and both of which require a lot of practice. So hopefully you found today's video informative and helpful, guys. And please consider giving the channel a like and sub if you enjoyed today's content. This has been Horcrux. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.